What's up guys? My name's Gamer360 Sports. Welcoming all of you to the second episode of the All Sim franchise with the Minnesota Twins. Last episode we started off the season in months April and May and we did not start off well. Just take a look right now at the division standings. We're 18 and 28. 6-4 in our last 10 with a 3-9-1 winning percentage. Right now our team is not doing that good, but we still have Justin Mortal in the top 5 in home runs with 12 on the season. Now anyway, we want to start off by simulating a couple days because the draft is right around this area right now. Because that is where we get to pick our first ever rookies in this series. But first things first, I want to sim simulate this series against the Detroit Tigers. So I'm going to simulate all of these games. We got swept by the Braves in the featured series, which I hope you guys enjoyed the highlight package. I haven't seen the comments yet because it is currently April 28th and it's uploading for May 2nd. But anyway, we Basically what I said here was that I'm doing some trades to mix things up to start up the season and get the Twins some prospects. So first things first, I'm going to go over to the Tampa Bay Rays. It's not a division, so it's available to actually do starting pitchers. And you have to go all the way down here for these two pitchers. And right now I want to deal them Mike Pelfi, which currently is 2-4, and four, not that good. And one of our catching prospects, a, prospects, a B overall, Chris Herman, who, which they will actually do that. I want to do this because Chris Herman is struggling right now in the minors, and he's in AAA. He's 25 years old, which means the max he'll get is like a low 70, like a utility guy. And right now, I just want this guy to be on their team or he can succeed. But anyway, let's offer that trade. They want to do it. Let's wait a few days. Let's, let's stimulate. All right, let's skip ahead a little bit faster. Let's see, roster, catchers, yeah, the move was made. So now we have our starting pitcher prospects. First, I want to send him to AAA because I don't want him struggling to start off. He's a B potential, not like an A potential. And our other guy we just picked up, let's see where he is. He's also in AAA, so that's good. They're both in AAA, and they're both on our team now. And also, we lost one catching prospect and one starter pitching prospect, that's it. Now we have to move, I think, Samuel Dino into the starting rotation. 74 overall. That should be pretty decent. Let me just mess around with the pitching rotation. Yeah, it's automatically done. Let's see. Roster. I can call someone up. I need to call a reliever up, so I'm going to call up Castilla right now. Okay, he's not on the 40-man. Someone that's on the 40-man. Tyler Robinson, you're up to the majors again. Okay, so... Probably going to simulate through some of this stuff because I don't want it going on forever. And Robinson, yeah. Okay, we got a guy in there. And so, I want to simulate a couple more days on to the fourth. I want to make one deal before the actual drop because I already know which prospects I want to get. Because I've seen potentials and I already know we're in a top 10 pick this year. So, let's go make a trade. This one is into the National League this time around. Where I'm trading with the St. Louis Cardinals. Let me just flip through. Okay, St. Louis Cardinals. This deal, some people might think it's a ripoff. Others might not. It's going to be Jay Ragland, a top 50 prospect. And first baseman, Matt Carpenter, a utility guy on our team. For, yes, this is where it gets controversial. Eric Fryer and Louis Doe. They'd take anything. Okay, what the heck? They were able to take this last time. I checked this a couple days ago, and they were willing to take this. Um, but I am willing to give Dermot because I want to give Fryer some more playing time. Even though Dermot's contact is a 78, Joe Maurer is going to be the starter for at least another five seasons. So we don't need a high potential guy off the bench. So I'm willing to give Dermot and willing to give Doe. Both of them, I'm willing to give up. So let's send that deal. Carno should take it. And now let's simulate by day. Because the draft is coming up any second. Trevor Poole no longer injured. Here's the draft. Okay, so we have the fourth overall pick. It's Astros, Cubs, Rockies, Twins, 
and Indians in the top five. Boston got six. Miami got seven. Toronto's got ninth. I just spent a couple seconds figuring out who to actually pick in the first round. Right now, this guy. Robbie Kojima, this guy I know I want. 2014 ETA, West, 93 potential, 100%, and look at all this stuff. His makeup may be decent, but his movement's good, his durability's good, he's only 18 years old. We're picking Kojima in the first pick. Every time we do a draft, I'm going to be stepping in in between picks to make sure the video doesn't last that long. So let's get back to the second round. This guy is 2018 ETA, he is 18 years old, Francis Knight. Let's get Francis Knight. During round three, I took a swing at a guy I've never seen before. Okay, so let's go into the ETA. I'm going to take a little bit of a swing at one of these guys. This 19-year-old reliever might be something, who's a 54 overall to start off. And now let's go into round four. Okay. Now we get the, got the high ETAs. Okay, so this guy's 22, not worth it. This guy's worth it. This first baseman, 46 overall, but who cares? It's funny, when you start off, it's all organized by overall when you draft. I don't know why it's like that, but it's pretty glitchy. This guy's 20, and this guy would be this. 26 when he makes the majors. That's not fast enough. But I may as well get him. Just for some depth in the prospects. Okay, round six. And this is where everyone gets crummy. This guy would be ready by the time he is, I think. So 20. 28. I'm going to get him. Because everyone else is 45, 44, 43. All these guys are taking forever. And by the end of this, I was just fried. Alright, let's get Albert Morgan just to fill it up. 19 year old. And the draft picks have done. Now let's go and sign our draft picks. Okay, sign draft picks. I want to sign Kojima for sure. Lock him down for four years. But he doesn't want to be locked down, so three years. Let's go two year, two year, two... More amount. Two year. Two year. Two year. Two year. So that's pretty good. We got our prospects all locked up. So this Albert Morgan was actually a C. But Colburn was actually an A, which is good. Then we have Presley A. Dominguez A. B is Benji Morgan, which I took a chance on. So I was right. Francis Knight A, and these guys are all good. We might be able to start Kojima by 2015. I want to get him in the minors for at least one year. So let's simulate a couple days. I already know which series I want to do. Auto fix the lineups. Here we go. The trade went through. Trade went through, and let's see. Catchers. Yeah, it went through. So let's see. Now we have a top 50 prospect in Ru Raglan down there in the minors getting ready to come up. So our triple A rotation is pretty stacked. We have our Rizzi, we have Raglan, and we also have, I think, the one our guy. Oh yeah, Guerra. And next year we're gonna have guys like Kojima and that kind of stuff up in triple A dominating and pitching. So hopefully our team does good. But I want to do the lineups for a second because I want I want someone up in the majors right now, and that's the first baseman we just got. He's up in the majors. Okay. Lineups. Yeah, he's put in as the DH. That's good. I'm all right with him as the DH coming off the bench. And by the looks of it, he can play third base, which is good because our third baseman before was like Jamie Carroll, which he isn't doing that good in the first place. Okay. And once again... More pointless training assignment searches. Alright, so let's simulate. This is probably going to be a faster episode with the highlights and that kind of stuff. But the series I'm going to be featuring is this series against the Toronto Blue Jays. July 5th, 6th, and 7th. It's going to be in our road series, which I really hate playing on the road. As we just cruise through the month of June, you can notice there's one pitcher that loses every single game he plays. And that is Kevin Carrera 
and I just about had it after he fell to 1 in 10 on the season. I definitely need a new starting pitcher because if you're seeing that, hold on, hold on, stop it, stop it. Take a look at this right here. I gotta get Carrera out of this rotation. 1 in 10. Do I have any starting pitchers down here? I'm, I'm definitely sending down Carrera because this is getting embarrassing for him. I want to bring up somebody that's decent. I'm going to bring up... Hold on, let me see. Yeah, I'm going to bring up Vasquez to replace him in the Major League rotation. Carrera can spend some time in AAA. Yes, yes, without clearing optional waivers. He's not going to get picked up on waivers. <laughs> he's not going to get picked up on waivers. Okay, so let's get... Vasquez in there, switch it up with Danino because I just want this to be different right now. Okay, perfect. And now let's simulate a couple more days. And right now we are just sucking it up, 30 and 54, make that. Okay, he cleared waivers just like I thought, he was sucking it up. But anyway, we're going to now go into the highlight package brought to you by Gamer360 Sports. I'll see you guys in 3, 2, 1. The Toronto Blue Jays are one of the top teams in baseball on a three-game winning streak and on top of the toughest division in baseball taking on the dead last Minnesota Twins. But in game one, it was all Twins to start off as Josh Willingham takes all a diggy for a ride to make it 2-0. Now Vince Worley was on the mound for the Minnesota Twins and he got a jam in the second but he gets a double play to get out of the situation with no runs allowed still 2-0 Twins. Now back to the Twins offense as Joe Mauer is up to the plate he hits this ball to right field another two run shot to make it 4-0 Toronto was struggling in this game and so was Minnesota because they force a man on fourth and second on this base hit by Melky Cabrera and up would come Jose Bautista as he would cream this ball to left field a three-run shot the first home run allowed by Worley this month as that makes it a one-run ball game but the twins still continue to bring in more and more offense they get this RBI single to bring in two more runs up the middle to make it five to three and this game was completely offensive as once again, Matt Carpenter acquired in a trade earlier this season would crane this ball into the gap just short of the fence and would bring in another two runs to make it 7-3. to three. And the Twins would add the exclamation point as a solo shot will be hit by Josh Willingham to the upper deck. That's the second home run of the game for Willingham. And that would seal the deal. The Blue Jays would never come back in this one. The final score would be 10-5 Twins on a great day by Josh Willingham. Now game two of the series was a different story as Ricky Romero was on the mound for Toronto and he has been struggling this season with a 5.08 ERA. But to start off, he was cruising because he forces a ground ball to Encarnacion to end off the first inning, then strikes out Justin Morneau looking, who currently is second in home runs in the AL. Now Toronto would give him some insurance in the second inning. With the bases loaded, they go for a sacrifice fly all the way towards the warning track to bring in the first run of the game to make it one nothing Blue Jays. This game continued. Uh, still in the second inning, and our ground ball would lead to an error by Justin Morneau, bringing in a second run only one out happens on the play so it's two nothing Blue Jays now Ricky Romero continued to cruise he was cruising all game long striking out batter after batter he strikes out Josh Willingham swing and then he strikes out Trevor Plouffe right afterwards on just four pitchers now in the bottom fourth it was a crazy play in center field as Masterani would chase this ball down and catch it right at the wall in the warning track that is a potential highlight of the night for the Minnesota Twins. Now back to Toronto. Goodbye, baseball. Edwin Encarnacion hits home run number 22 on the season to add the exclamation mark for Toronto. And in the top of the night, they would seal it as they forced a ground ball to end off this game. 3-0 Blue Jays was your final as Ricky Romero went the full distance for win number seven. 
Now game three of this series was the rubble match, and Minnesota wanted to win this one for sure. But on the mound for Toronto was Mark Burley, who is 7-1, a top three winning percentage in the AL and the MLB this season. And to start off, he was in a bit of trouble. He had a man on third, and he lost the first run of the game on this sacrifice fly to make it 1-0 Twins. Now on the mound for Minnesota was Scott Diamond, who lost his last matchup on two earned runs and six hits. Now he was cruising to start off. He strikes out Kobe Rasmus to start off the game in the second. Now going into the top of the third, Minnesota would bring in more runs on his RBI ground out to make it to nothing. And they hit another RBI ground out with the man on third to the shortstop to make it three nothing twins. They were cruising early on offense. Still three nothing Toronto would ground out for the double play as Scott Diamond was still cruising in this one. Now bottom fourth with two outs he gets out of a jam and strikes out Melky Cabrera to end off the inning. Bottom six, Blanco strikes out swing as Scott Diamond continued to cruise as he forces Kobe Rasmus to ground out right back to him to end off the seventh inning. But in the eighth inning, he would lose his shutout as Jose Reyes creams this ball into the gap with a man on third to make it 5-1 Blue Jays on the RBI double. Now the Blue Jays in the ninth had a chance because with one out, Ignacion at the plate, Hulk would overthrow this ball over Justin Morneau's head and it goes all the way to second base. Are you kidding me, Proof? You can't do that. But the Twins would get out of the inning as Brett Lurie grounds out to end off the game as the Twins win the series 2-1 and win the game 6-1 thanks to Scott Diamond and his great pitching. Now this one, a wrap of this episode of the All Sim franchise with the Minnesota Twins. All corrections will appear on your screen right now. So if I didn't catch anything, tell me in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Smash that like button and have a great day.